do all my traffic stops in every different way possible. Officer safety is officer, officer cowardice. Is it officer? They're going to be coming by to check by with you tomorrow, possibly. Um, you can't stay out here for 14 days, but... Can I see your ID? No, you yeah, cannot. As you, I left my ID at my house. No, you That's cannot. Right. Can I see your ID, huh? No, you cannot. Right now, over me. Yes, you are. Well, which law? Where's, where's the no parking sign? Okay. Welcome back to our channel. Imagine you're driving and suddenly the police ask you to pull over without any legal grounds. How would you react? In today's video, we'll dive into intense situations where legal knowledge becomes the most solid shield. These stories not only illustrate the power of understanding but also demonstrate that every citizen, no matter how ordinary, can stand up to protect their rights against abuses of power. Stay tuned to discover how an ordinary person can become their own hero simply by knowing their rights and standing firm to protect them. Don't miss out, as this is a lesson that everyone needs to learn. Can the police use their eyes to determine if a car is speeding? Pulling him over, so... Yeah, well, he was going 87, you were going 85. No, I got my cruise on. I tell you to. I got my cruise on. Give me your driver's license and your registration. Well, you gotta give me a minute for the registration, but... It sounds absurd and unacceptable, but this story is true. A Nevada Highway Patrol officer pulled over a vehicle and accused the driver of speeding, despite having no evidence to support the claim. Meanwhile, the driver asserted that he was not speeding and had evidence from his dash cam. This incident not only highlights the lack of knowledge and professionalism of the police, but also raises concerns about the abuse of power. It clearly constitutes a severe violation of the citizens' rights protected by the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution which prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures without specific evidence. Just do your job. I'm with him. I'm good right here. Are you pulling me over or both of us? I'm fine right here. You're not pulling me over, right? Are you pulling me over? 7, 85 miles an hour. No, we're not. I got my cruise on. Okay. So. Driver's license and registration, please. You're pulling him over, right? You and him both. You just told me you were pulling him over, so... Yeah, well, he was going 87. I got my cruise you on. Give me your driver's license and your registration and insurance. Well, you gotta give me a minute for the registration, but... And you realize that... How, how can you see my speed when he's right in front of me? You're following him. So, yeah. here's what I did uh -huh. on him. He was going 87. As soon as he passed, it went to 85 on you. I'd never stop the radar. Do you have a, a printout of that? Now, or when I make a traffic stop, that? if you don't do as I say by pulling to the front of him, yeah. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make is that sure a law I have, of order? Yeah, it is, because it's that? officer safety. You're obstructing officer my traffic stop. Officer safety is not a law. So, quote me the so code that I can that. make sure that I... Can you quote me the law, the law for that? The code? I'm not going to pull you the law for that. Then there, there is, is no law, law for that. Order. There has to be a code 100. for it. For officer safety, there is no code. I don't care. Just like there's no code Why for is it what's that the you problem. Won't do what I tell you to. I'm with him, okay? It's not safe for me to just win. Yeah, I don't when exactly go to the front I'm of people's vehicles. I'm already pulled because over. Because if you had a gun or something like that, you could always. <laughs> what are you so scared of? We maintain you, our safety. You think everybody's safety. out to get you? That is the way we maintain our safety. Why do you guys always think? I don't know who you are. I don't know Your where you're coming from. Your officer safety issue is. Re you guys have like one you're of the least, you least dangerous cooperate. jobs. You just won't cooperate. I don't have to cooperate because you didn't pull me over. You pulled okay. him over. It's a work truck, so you're going to bear with me here. I don't know why you got to get so mad about it. I'm with him. We're on a road trip delivering these two trucks, so what's the problem with me just sitting right back here waiting for you to do what's your job? Problem? Really, it's not safe for me to do you that. You just don't want to do it. When I'm already right, pulled so over. That's just, that's the issue. You just don't no, want to do it. No, because it's ridiculous. There's no reason for it. You're I mean, mad because you, are you, are you that scared? Over because I pulled your friend over. No, that's you're mad because you gotta be. You, you think you need to be scared when you're the I'm one with the guns. Scared. Everyone knows that the police are representatives of the law, tasked with protecting and enforcing citizens' rights. However, there is a small segment within this force that erodes public trust. In this case, the driver and passengers felt deeply aggrieved by the police's actions. They were skeptical and no longer trusted the police's true intentions. It seemed as though the traffic stop was merely a staged performance with unjustified reasons. The driver strongly condemned the police for their baseless speeding accusations. These actions not only constitute an abuse of power but also severely violate the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, which protects the right to remain silent and against self-incrimination. What the fuck? You kidding me? What the fuck? What is he doing? What the hell is he doing? What is he doing? Eric, stop. Don't go nowhere. 
What's he doing? He's fucking being weird. He's just mad because I pulled over. <laughs> Behind him. Typical Nevada cop. And now that he's pulled us on the fucking private property. Yeah, and he first fucking... I don't even know what the hell he's doing. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he's fucking being weird. He's being weird. I don't know why the fuck he pulled us off into here, though. That's, like, that makes me nervous. But he first, at first, he tried saying, for me to pull, to go ahead, telling me to go. And I'm like, I'm with him. And then he's like, pull ahead. Pull ahead of me. I don't want you behind me. I'm like, like you know, you need to pull, you need to pull ahead. I'm like, did you even pull me over? No, you pulled him over. I'm like, no, I'm pulling both of you over. Officer safety thing. I'm like, dude, quote me the code. He's like, I don't know the code off the top of my head. Then there is no law. You can't tell me to pull ahead. I'm on a public road. But I bet you he's just gonna give us either, well, he might give me a ticket, but he'd probably give us a warning. Especially because since we're out of state, he's gonna fucking play Mr. Uh, make sure you come back to pay the ticket. He tried saying he clocked you at 80, 87, and then he said when he passed, he said it went to 85. Neither one of us were going that fast. You remember how fast your, your speedometer said you were going? What's he doing? Can you hear me? So what's he doing? I said, what's what's he doing? Probably looking me up. Trying to find some excuse. So glad I finally got my license. Man. The dispute between the police and the driver escalated, and it must be acknowledged that this driver truly deserves praise. He not only understood the law but also stood firm on his fundamental rights. Under the First Amendment, citizens have the right to free speech and expression, including recording and filming public officials while they are performing their duties in public spaces. This driver proudly emphasized Nevada's conditional immunity, a crucial tool that protects us from police abuse. Abuse of power not only undermines public trust, but can also lead to significant changes in police accountability in Nevada. This is not just a personal struggle, but an important fight to protect rights and fairness in society. You know, in the Constitution it says that a traffic stop isn't supposed to be anywhere unnecessarily long and typically no longer than 15 minutes or as long as it takes to write a ticket. And that's in the law. Man, I wish I could fucking hear what they're saying, but I can get their body cam footage if they got... Did, did you notice if you had a body cam? Did you notice who it was activated? Yeah, they should, usually they have a flashing red light. God, how many more miles do we got left? Like seven, 700? It's funny though how he claimed that you were going 87, but then wrote the ticket for 80. Like, really? Right there you're admitting it wasn't actually what you saw. Yeah, and just so you know, you have every, you have every right to just sit right there and wait for me. They can't tell you to leave. I mean, they can tell you, they can ask you to leave, but you don't have to. God, they're really trying to hide. He's like, I wonder, I think he can see my camera because he's like ducking just out of you. Yeah, but then they probably think I'm gonna try and run into him. So, probably not a good idea to do that. No sound on it though, right? Yeah. This is ridiculous. Watch what happens if he tries to tell me I'm on private property trespassing. There has to be a complaint and, and someone that told me to leave. <laughs> you got a supervisor? One second. Um, do you? Hey, and actually, is your body cam rolling? Body camera is on. Give that all to I you need I'm it on from a card. You. No, I'm you, can, give it. you can verbalize it. I'm gonna give it to it's you. It's the law. You, you're supposed to verbalize. I'm gonna give it. Can I'm you verbally give you identify yourself? All I have to do is provide it to you. That's verbally. All I have to do. Verbally. I'm gonna explain your citation Someone to you. Someone that has vision problems. Is your violation. Because anybody that has vision vision problems is the reason why you're supposed to verbally identify. Do you have vision problems? It doesn't matter if I do or not. I don't know about that. You know that. Anyway, yes, I'm gonna you give do. you this. Your violation's there. That's your total. What's the, the violation? Lowest justice court. Oh, We're going what? 85 and a 70. Huh. I'm going to give you a violation citation for okay, what's your 80 name? and a 70. What's your it's, name and badge number? Right down here. Are, are you right going to fail here. to identify? 
I'm not going to fail to identify. So identify. I, I'm providing you the information Identify, to please. You. The Wells Justice Court, the phone number's right there. And verbally I gave identify, this, please. I gave it till this day Otherwise, you're not a cop. Citation. If you don't verbally identify, you're not a cop. I gave your options and your instructions on how to pay out a contest. My Who, information is down here. Who's your supervising here. officer? Huh? Who's your supervisor? My information is down here. I'm providing that information to who's you. Who's your There's supervisor? Your have a safe day. Who's your supervisor, asshole? Who's your supervisor? And you didn't you didn't verbally identify. What's your name and badge number? I need you guys to verbally identify. We're not gonna play these stupid games. Either that or give me your card. Both of you. And it's not a re it's not a request, it's a demand. I need your name and badge number or your card. That's your job. You guys just not like following the law? You're out here trying to enforce laws and you're not even gonna follow the law yourself? What? You're not following the law. You're not verbally identifying yourselves. By not doing that, you're not cops. You realize that? Not verbally. It's a huge problem in this whole country. You know that. Don't play dumb. Yes, you are playing dumb. Look at your condescending look. I'm not condescending. I'm demanding your ID for anybody that might have vision problems. That's the reason for it. You know that. You guys going to fail to ID, both of you? Thank you. Okay. What's your badge number? 371. Thank you. Boyer? Boyer? And what was the number again? 443? I didn't have to. No, I didn't. Was it a lawful order? If it was, quote me the law. Quote me the law. You didn't pull me over, you pulled him over. Obstructing is a physical act. A physical act, not verbal. Don't play dumb. Really, you can let go of your ego. It makes things run a lot smoother. If you're, if, you know, if you're courteous, back to you. If you're an asshole, I'm gonna be an asshole right back to you. There ain't no law against that, and you know it. That's the First Amendment. You guys got a supervisor? Yeah. That's What's my his name? Supervisor's name and phone number right there. Okay. Can you? Uh, how long would it take him to get here? He's not working today. Yeah. Bullshit. I guarantee it. So who, I can who's, get another who's supervisor that comes all the way your supervisor Alco? right now that's that is working? He is my supervisor for this district. Put his name I can on get there. you another. Who is working right from now? Elko. Can I talk? Who's I can working get you right now? Another sergeant. You're you're my servant. I'm not your servant. You understand that? That's how it works. That's how the In law second, works. I'm gonna get you another one. How about you just call him out here? Because this is ridiculous. This is about an hour and a half. Well, an well, hour and a half. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that I'm really? Right wow, you guys are funny. You realize there's cops getting fired all over the country for this kind of shit. Losing your fucking pensions, losing your job, even going to jail. Qualified immunity is going away. You realize that? I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure isn't it already gone in Nevada? You guys are out here acting like you're the fucking boss of the road, but you're not. You're public servant, law enforcement, not feelings enforcement. Your feeling about me being in your way when I wasn't is your I don't have to move just because you don't like me there. I mean, if I'm wrong, quote me the law. And that you you can't do that tells me that I'm right and you're full of shit. No, I'm just trying to get you to give me a straight answer. And you don't want to do that. Yeah, quote me the law that tells me I have to move. Understanding your rights and regulations when stopped by police is crucial. Legal guidelines from the police can protect your rights and ensure their actions are lawful. Recording videos in such situations provides valuable evidence for future disputes. Maintaining a calm and respectful attitude helps manage the situation more smoothly. Remember that you have the right to request information and need to know your rights to protect yourself. Who is suspicious in this county? No, sir. Are you the boss or is he the boss? He's the, boss. Okay. the police's suspicion of criminal charges in this case is entirely unfounded. Man, we got a call about, about you being out here. To deal is that with illegal? That. Well, we get a lot of stolen recovery stuff out here. Police are law enforcement officers tasked with protecting citizens' rights. However, according to legal regulations, they must have sufficient evidence to accuse someone of committing a crime. In this case, the police relied solely on unclear information to make their accusation, which is clearly a serious violation. Russell quickly criticized the police for violating the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, protecting citizens against unreasonable searches and seizures without legal warrants. This underscores that law enforcement agencies need specific and legal reasons to detain or request personal information. Moreover, 
citizens have the right to refuse to provide information that could self-incriminate or infringe upon their rights. You need some? Yeah, ma'am. Lieutenant Doherty with the Sheriff's Office. This is Detective Russell. Man, we got a call about, about you being out here. Well, we get a lot of stolen recovery stuff out here. Uh, okay. A lot of stolen properties found over this way, so somebody had came by they said you've been out here about three or four days so well, like i just explained to you we got a couple we got a call about i hear it. you so have a call out, and we come have out is something it. what's being investigated you got two not, detectives not here not necessarily the call was brought to me <clears throat> whatever you're doing or if you're supposed to be here if you're working that's fine but we just got to verify that and then we'll be on our way i'm not or... giving up any information about myself Okay, do you work for this plumbing company? I haven't done anything illegal, have I? Well, what am I being investigated for? Somebody called in and so, we're investigating some suspicious activity. So that's not illegal though, right? Suspicious. What is, what are y'all investigating illegal? Y'all are law enforcement, right? Right. So what law are y'all suspecting me of having broken? Somebody, somebody drove by and seen all of this. Uh-huh. And it's not normally like this. I don't normally talk to detectives, so y'all are being kind of suspicious talking to me. Well, we're a small county. So, so there's a lot of things that not everybody considers normal. I don't consider two guys who are detectives pulling up on me. What law have I broken, first of all? You have not broken a law. What am I being in? What am I being investigated okay. for breaking? I'm not, I'm not, I'm claiming my Fifth Amendment. I don't want to answer any questions. Okay. I have a Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate myself. I want to know why y'all are investigating me. That. No, you haven't. You said okay, suspicious. Let, okay, let me break this down to you one more time. You got a call. No, we had a complainant come by the sheriff's office and has not seen you out here ever before, right? Okay. He says, hey, there's a vehicle out there. Our past history, we recover a lot of stolen stuff out here. People stripping vehicles, people dumping stuff off. Not, okay. But that raises suspicion so for us to go out here and find out. And hey, y'all are law enforcement. Don't cut me off. Why not? Is this not, am I, am I not allowed to speak is what you're saying? You're just asking me to explain to you why we're out here and I'm trying you, to do this. I don't need a novel on why y'all are out here. I want to get down okay. to the root of things. How can we. Do you have any we... on you, sir? Do you have any weapons in there or anything on you? I'm not going to answer any questions. Okay according to my fifth amendment right y'all have video cameras here and your name is lieutenant doherty yes sir with the sheriff's office with the sheriff's office do you have a badge number uh badge number 52 detective and, russell and your name's detective russell yes sir okay y'all aren't suspecting me of a crime at this point right no sir it's just suspicious activity i am i have to identify myself because somebody called y'all well this is kind of suspicious i mean like so we recover a lot so if you find something to be suspicious do you know what the constitution says about my fourth amendment right yes sir what does it say do you know what the constitution says about the fourth amendment yes sir, you know I what do. the i'm not here to violate in the bill of rights right. you are if you're saying i have to provide my id without having broken any laws okay so we'll, we'll let him talk to you about that okay? I, I i didn't know that i thought i had a fourth amendment right in this country i don't i don't know who needs to talk to me about whether or not I have to surrender my person, papers, and effects because they got a phone call. Why would I need to talk to somebody about that? The debate between the police and Russell became increasingly tense as he asserted that he was standing on public property in the Sam Houston National Forest and affecting no one. Russell's frustration with the police's handling of the situation was evident and entirely justified. The police's actions, lacking basis and invading his privacy, left him feeling deeply disheartened. This not only exposed the police's lack of understanding and respect for personal rights, but also highlighted serious issues in their law enforcement practices. What are you doing, to be honest with you? You know, honestly, I this is kind of antagonistic when I've got law enforcement coming up investigating. I don't have any reason to try to let, let me let me develop if, any relationship with you guys. If you if you own property. What, why are we talking about personal property all of a sudden? I'm just, I'm, I'm putting a situation out there. Try to, try okay. To You're giving okay. me a hypothetical. Go ahead. Right. And there was somebody on your property that you didn't know. You thought it was suspicious. If you called us, we would go and try to identify that person and find out what they were doing. We're not trying to violate anybody's rights. We're not trying to look to take anybody to jail. We're just trying to figure out what you're doing. But this is America, not like Nazi Germany. No, sir. It's, it's, it's not you're Nazi telling me Germany. I got to provide my papers like they did. Because because y'all got a call from somebody who said, according to them, I'm engaged in suspicious activity. I'm not engaged in suspicious activity. I got my window down. 
starting to rain, I would roll it up if it wasn't for the fact that I got what I'm doing for no legal reason. I'm going to roll this up and I'll step out of the truck. I'll just step over here where I got a little shelter. Oh, solar panels? Yes. Is that suspicious no, having no, solar no, panels? No, no, I think that's suspicious. If solar panels, that's got to be suspicious activity having a solar panel. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> what what else is suspicious? Two is suspicious in this county? No, sir. Are you the boss or is he the boss? He's the boss. Oh, all right. He's the lieutenant. And he just left you out here in the rain? Yeah. <laughs> Do you, is this what you do? You install a solar panel? My wife's uncle, the reason I'm asking is my wife's uncle just put a bunch on top of his garage. You curious is, is about them? Well, yeah, but is it worth the money? Well, if if we weren't in the uh, situation we were in right now, I would. I have done quite a bit of research, but since we're in the situation we're in right now, I don't want to make any small talk or anything that could be used uh, about anything right now that's personally... Uh, relevant because I don't have to incriminate myself in this country. Uh, uh, I saw somebody drive by here that was suspicious yesterday. Did you? What was they doing? He, they're probably the ones that called y'all and said I was suspicious. What were they doing that was suspicious? Driving by real slow, staring at me like I'm some kind of spectacle for them to just... Well, to and then they started saying, hey, I just checked this area out. He had missing teeth. He looked like a old meth head or something. That might be who called. He might be law enforcement. <laughs> Y'all don't hire old meth heads at no, the. No, uh, I'm pretty new here, but. Uh, they do a pretty thorough background check? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. The application's like 30 something pages long. It's all the information you got to give. Well, all law enforcement agencies in Texas go by the same uh, background uh, application. When I first started, it was like a two page application. That was 30. Oh, you first started 32 years ago? You're just now making it the detective? No, no, no. I've. I've retired a detective coming back in years and then I'm back okay all right sweet new day and age or still the same it's all new it's, it's all, all new, new nowadays huh it's, uh, it's different. are you from it, retired from this county or no i've retired in angelina county angelina is that here in Look, texas that's actually how i know him he was we were on the swat team together Ah, we're neither one of us on the SWAT team no, anymore. For a random call of a guy camping <laughs> in the national forest, y'all don't even have jurisdiction. <laughs> sure, we got jurisdiction. Do y'all does the because the they have their own police here? Forest Service law enforcement. Right. That, that they're federal, so but, right. But Which this is federal land. Yes, but it's in the state of Texas, so we still have authority. Do they? They would have to contract you to have jurisdiction here. No. Because this is Sam Houston National Forest. It's federal. That's the reason a state game warden can arrest somebody out here. We're certified through the state of Texas, just like a state police officer. I'm sure they, the the Forest Service can't go into town and arrest somebody, sure. right? They have jurisdiction wherever they're at. Whatever county they're in, y'all have jurisdiction. Anywhere y'all are, y'all have jurisdiction. Breach of the peace, we have jurisdiction in other counties. Uh, okay, okay. But in this county, For yes. For sure, if it's like I have jurisdiction, if it's a felony, yes. right? Yeah. I can arrest somebody yes. if it's a felony. Yeah. There's certain boundaries and parameters with which each law enforcement agency has. Right. I'm not going to go write a. Right. You're not going to write any tickets no, in it's, Harris it's, County. It's got to be like, like I said, a breach of. The you law. would have to have a Harris County sheriff come uh, do any kind of legal um, in Harris County. Well, I would do, you know, I've got the authority to detain somebody. And and get, get them just there. saying, this is a national force. This is, I don't know, because sometimes federal property will contract, even though I know I've seen the uh, forest, uh, whatever they're called, the, the forest either their state or forest that have jurisdiction over this property. Right. The, the, that doesn't mean that y'all aren't also. Yeah, the federal government, they manage the... Right, and police it. And they police it. And the, enforce laws, the, the, because the, it has it has certain laws that you have to abide by. So I'm not really sure why I got a couple of local sheriffs hemming me up here, detectives, just, spending their time on me. <laughs> we're just investigating a call, that's it. Investigating a call. So, But you don't have any crime committed. There's no evidence of a crime at this point, no, sir. He's calling someone to find something out because I didn't want to just 
surrender my Fourth Amendment immediately, hand over my papers like it's Germany. Oh, no. no it's not Germany. It's not Germany. Even though there's no crime, Fourth Amendment still applies to me on federal property as far as I know. Yes, sir, it does. What kind of bow you got there? Is that a boy? I don't, I don't know too much about bows. I bought that already all with all the fixings on it. He's just going to talk to somebody on the phone. Am I detained right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am detained? Yes, sir. Not under arrest, but you're detained. Y'all have a, a crime that y'all are detaining like me said, for? Not at this point. I don't have to have a crime. Reasonable, articulable suspicion. You got to be able to articulate a crime to detain someone. You feel like it. I, I, I know that, sir. I've been Reasonable, for articulable years. suspicion of a crime. Have I'm speaking the years? law, how it's written in the law. Okay. However long you've been doing it, the way it's written in the law, suspicion of a crime. And what crime is that? There's no crime at this point. But yet I'm detained? Yes, sir. For no crime. I'm just detained because y'all feel like it. You're detained because we're trying to figure out what you're doing here and who you are to make sure that no crime has been Whether I'm detained or not. As soon as he gets off the phone, I will. They are right now detaining me with no reasonable, articulable suspicion of a crime. And he's talking on the phone because I won't provide ID with no actual reasonable, articulable suspicion of a crime. This is the uh, sheriff. You said what sheriff department? San Jacinto, San Jacinto County Sheriff Department. I don't even think they have jurisdiction here. It's in an unmarked car. So how long can I go to jail for suspicious activity? You don't go to jail for suspicious activity. But you get detained for suspicious activity. Yes, until we determine that there's, that there's no crime being committed. Uh, who who determines what is and what is not suspicious? We do once we get on the scene and try to figure things out. So y'all just make it up as you go? No. There's not actual laws that kind of regulate this stuff? Like I said, we had somebody call in suspicious activity. I don't care who called. We come I could have called on myself. Could. Say whatever they want to say. Okay. We come out to investigate. And is there a crime being committed? Not at this point, no. How long are y'all going to uh, investigate? As soon as he gets off the phone, hopefully we'll get out of here. How long have I been detained now? This is a 20-minute video. Which five minutes after y'all got here? Probably, yeah. yeah. And came up to my window and started talking to me? Yeah. So I'm 25 minutes. Yep. See, 19 minutes and 30 seconds. I believe you. I believe you. The dispute eventually subsided when the law enforcement officers from the forestry department arrived and clarified the situation for both parties. With timely and comprehensive intervention, the police officers had to yield and allow Russell to continue his work. This clearly demonstrates a serious lack of understanding of the law by the police in their duties. This not only reveals poor law enforcement, but also shows the severe consequences that such ignorance can have on citizens' rights. If you want to have a seat back in your truck, you can. I mean, it's... I really just don't want to be bothered at my campsite. I understand that too. I want to be free to do what I'm doing. I understand that. Coffee. Get a little more coffee. Thermos up here. So is Lieutenant Do Doherty, is he gonna talk on the phone all day long? Like a teenage girl? Figure out here. I don't even know who he called. Can we ask him? Because he's been well, on the I phone for... to the window a ago and he didn't know. Well, it was raining. He probably don't want to get rain on it. He's a little too delicate for that. I'd offer you some coffee, but it's already cold. It's, it's, uh, I'm sure you wish not want any. I'm not a big coffee drinker. Your boss is kind of annoying me, though. Uh, the Forestry Service is actually out here. Which, I mean, you don't have to tell me they make contact with you or not. They're going to be coming by to check by with you tomorrow, possibly 14 days, but they had ran into you a couple weeks ago at a different location here. Right. Not far. Um, it's their jurisdiction anyway, ain't it? Yes, sir. It was. He told me I'm being detained right now. Is that correct? Yes, Lawfully sir. detained. And that's with us just questioning you and on why. Doesn't you're it say here. about detaining people that you got to have a reasonable, I gave you, I gave you suspicion that. of a crime? Right. Yes, sir. And I What's gave you What's the all crime, that. sir? So I gave you all that. One We're going to come follow I've up with you out here. I didn't say no you committed a crime. crime. We told you. He told you. That's I told not you. reasonable. Art. Well, I told you why okay, we were out what? here. You can told, detain me I for told no you reason. why we were out here, and that's why we were out here. And I have you got to learn how to do your job the right okay, way. Okay, I sure will. It's important yes, to have 
R A S of an actual You're crop. Right. You have a good evening, sir. Try to stay dry. You have a good day as well. Take care, sir. We're just gonna keep it rolling. can't get out that way you're gonna have to go down there and turn around or I don't know if he's hanging out I'm not turning it off until they pull out anyways y'all can see it's raining a little bit solar panels kind of on hold all right I'm gonna start up my other camera and kill this feed They are being slow. Here they come. Two cameras going. This situation underscores the importance of understanding and protecting your rights, especially the right to be protected from unreasonable invasions and the right not to provide personal information without a valid reason. At the same time, it highlights the need for law enforcement agencies to respect and clearly explain their authority when interacting with citizens. Respect and transparency in communication not only help maintain trust between the community and public officials, but also ensure that everyone is treated fairly and legally. You're on video camera. Yeah, I am. So you're a liar now. Yeah. Okay, buddy. It's truly puzzling why the police would check the ID of someone waiting in line to buy something. Waiting in line. Yeah, waiting in line. We're sitting in the car. We're sitting in the car like, hey, you know what I'm saying? What's the point of standing for five hours when we all sit in the car? We know the, the argument escalated as customers waiting in line for a PS5 began to dispute priority. Tensions arose between early arrivals and those who came later, making the situation highly dramatic and causing frustration. I don't want to for nothing, sir. A guy, and I don't, in an insulting manner, that's when I got to kick it up. Badge and uh, name, sir? All, all recorded. Burton Smith, APO, Lincoln PD. We were just what here happened? first. We were just here first, and okay. we were just letting them know we're, we're kind of first in the so line. So you basically just waiting in line. Yeah, waiting in line. We're sitting in the car. Yeah. We're sitting in the car like, hey, you know what I'm saying? What's the point of standing for five hours? Okay. She runs up here and says she's first. I'm okay. like, all right, we're first in the line, but go ahead. We're first, though. And she's starting to get 11 o'clock. Gotcha. And we've been here since, what, five? Yeah. <laughs> They've been saying four, but that's all right. Anyway, with her that's right. We we pull up. they sitting in their car out there. My wife runs over here. They start saying, hey, y'all here for the PS5s? Right. Just, like just, just like he's saying. The situation became unreasonable and tense when the police intervened. Instead of addressing the situation, they inexplicably demanded that customers provide their IDs, which was immediately refused. The situation grew more serious when the police threatened to arrest the customers and their family members, causing strong outrage and anger among the crowd. This action was not only shocking but also a serious violation of citizens' rights under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution, which protect privacy and equality before the law. First in line, then you miss out. So they're saying they're first in line sitting in their car over there. Exactly. I'm like, okay, we too, we're first in line, like peacefully happy. In line, fishing to come up I'm and step in line, line. Here. Here. I'm like, This guy right here probably wants a PS5 also, and he's probably going to come stand in line with us. That's why I felt that she was acting disrespectful to you. Not when he's hollering at her. So when I first got up, she was hollering and a little butt above. I asked her to calm down. That's why I had her do it. No, you was threatening. Yes, you did, sir. I did not. Yes, you did. Keep on. And I promise you, where's your... Take you to jail. No, you, you told her you was going to take her to jail, sir. And if your video camera was on when you got out of that car, you're on video camera. So you're a liar now. Okay, buddy. No, you cannot. I left my ID at my house. No, you cannot. Can I see your ID, huh? No, you cannot. They just give it to him. I left part of my investigation to make sure everybody's not got John. anything going. So. As in what? Give it to him. No. I just have to he threatened to put us in jail for no reason. Like, 
No. We were you called out here. Not by me. Not by me. I'm on a public sidewalk. Give it to him. I know he don't need my ID. He don't need my ID. No. Give it to him. They're not going to do nothing. Jason ain't got nothing to do. Has everything to do with you? Can I go to try to get it? Absolutely, man. Right. That chemotherapy and this nigga yelling at me. I'm just trying to get a cake for my child. I, I got you. Well, you I got you. All because somebody was sitting. They was in line first sitting in their car. So my wife clearly got out of the car, walked over here, and got in line first. Nobody else was here at GameStop. Yeah, You're not. refusing to give me your name and date of birth, is that correct? I'm not refusing nothing because I'm not winded. What's your name? Officer Burton Smith. What's your social security two. number? I don't need to give What's you What's your date of birth? Number. I don't need to give you that. You have to identify yourself. Yes, you do. For what reason, sir? Why do I have to identify? What crime have I committed, sir? What crime have I committed, sir? I have not committed no crime. Do not need... Showing the fucking ID. No, I do not need to show my ID. For no reason. I have not committed no crime, sir. You threaten to take my wife to jail for no reason, sir. I did not threaten yes, to yes, you did, sir. Well, I'm not going to argue with you. That's fine, sir. Complaint form that our police what department. complaint do you right have now, against me? We're dealing with this, and I called out, got called out here for I domestic in progress. Your wife's a Him little and bit her was arguing, I yes, sir. Her, which is common practice. You for threatened us. to take her to jail and because she was highly going. because you say no, you didn't no, know what was going on. on. You're not going to tell me nothing, thing. The fact is, well, why do I need my ID and why you need to identify me? Stop! Because you just won't stop. I do. I do. You're not going to take me to jail, I promise you that. You're not going to get my ID, neither. I just was meaning to separate clear story of what's going on. And threaten her. The police's justification that they merely wanted to verify the identity of those causing trouble was unfounded and entirely unconvincing. This action severely violated the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which protects citizens from unreasonable searches and demands. Customers' frustration grew as they witnessed the police's handling of the situation. The situation became more tense as the police's response only exacerbated the crowd's anger, making them feel their rights were severely violated. I was just sitting here. I was sitting right here beside my wife. My wife and him was the ones that was. We have a law for reason to be here, so we know everybody here because we're identifying everybody here. She's I'm still first in line. I'm not pushing that issue. I'm just saying we have every lawful reason. We're here violating your rights or something like that. We're not doing. We got summons here by somebody. Her. Who's with you? She didn't call the law, and I didn't call. Whoever call. called law, somebody here called the law. They didn't call the law. We, 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 got, we got called. We didn't. We didn't just pick it up out of the blue and go. Let's go mess with those people. We're just sitting on the store. I didn't know we if y'all was riding by or riding through the somebody parking called. lot or something. So we, you know. We have, we have to identify people. We do that. Yes, that's how it works. That, that's all it is. We're not saying you're in trouble or anything. We just identify, make sure everybody's good to go. But what I'm saying is, is that you can't sit here and refuse to identify yourself. And now, if you're walking down the down the sidewalk here, and I decide to get out and say, "Hey, give me your ID," you tell me kick off. Your ID. But we had a lawful reason. Ever since you pulled up, correct? No, I actually think we are we both here in the same place. You know, know that we're both here in the same thing. You can see, if you were sitting in your car and I pulled up, I, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been sitting in my car if I know there's only five or six things that are in this store. Okay, I wouldn't I be doing that. Get out the car now. I know, okay, now the line has to start. But you pulled up and just start yelling. No, I did when not. I act, after I asked you, are you here for You shouldn't have even asked but me. But you said you were. It doesn't matter. I should respond to that. I would have took silences. Okay, so, you know so either way, what y'all are y'all apparently here to purchase the same item? The same thing. Yeah. Is there going to be enough I for her and you? Or y'all don't, don't, don't know? I don't know. There should be. They I should be. There was gonna be five. They should be five or seven of them. They should be. They should be. They don't know how many is gonna come. Look here. Look. 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 On my car? I need, yeah, that'll work. There you go, bud. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good Have a good day. Good luck to you. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Say hey to you, too. Even as law enforcement officers, the police must operate based on solid legal grounds and clear evidence. Lack of legal knowledge and absence of convincing evidence not only escalate tensions, but can also lead to unnecessary confrontations. To truly protect citizens' rights and maintain order, Law enforcement agencies need to be well-versed in legal regulations and act accurately and fairly.
by running my tag without me committing a traffic infringement. No parking signs are absent, but for these police officers, parking here is still considered a violation. What? Illegally parked? There's no, no parking sign on this place. Do you feel frustrated when someone parks in an area with no no parking signs, but still gets accused of a traffic violation by the police? This is completely unreasonable and lacks any legal basis. When law enforcement acts this way, it not only causes disappointment, but also shows serious irresponsibility. The police are supposed to uphold justice fairly, but when they act arbitrarily and without basis, justice and law are undermined, damaging public trust. What? Illegally parked? There's no, no parking sign on this place. Everyday people park here. So what made you decide today now that, okay, I'm gonna mess with this guy? That's all I'm asking. What reasonable, articulable suspicion do you have of me committing a crime? What reasonable... When I initially came up to you, when I initially came up to you... What reasonable, articulable... Sir, sir, please. Uh, and I asked you, I, I asked you, and I, and I articulated to you, that okay. people park here every day. I see you guys come here. What brought you over to me today? In our defense, when, when, we don't come over here every day, sir. We don't. Okay, so there's no no parking sign right here. Are you saying that this is not a designated parking spot? Where is there a no parking sign right here that I am in breach of a city ordinance? And then you're going to come up to me and ask me for my driver's license without me, without you suspecting me of committing a crime or in the process of committing a crime, right? I know you're gonna run my tag, and I asked you politely, but you are you, you under the color of law are abusing your authority. No, I'm not. It's the yes, law. you are. It's well, it's which it's law? law? Where's where's the no parking sign? Okay. The situation didn't stop there as the police continued to unreasonably demand the driver's license plate number. This action seriously violated the citizens' rights protected by the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. Even more concerning, the situation ended with threats to suspend the driver's license. This is not only an abuse of power, but also a violation of the citizens' legal rights. The egregious and unacceptable nature of this action reflects a lack of responsibility and fairness on the part of the police, raising doubts about the fairness of law enforcement practices. Okay, so that's but why... Here's the deal, you're parking in a spot that is not a parking spot. This is a parking infraction. Where is a, where is a city ordinance that's posted that say this particular area is a no parking? Oh, so, okay, okay. So I'm so I'm the guinea pig this morning. I'm the guinea pig, okay. You go around, okay, I mess with people for no reason at all, right? Right, Officer Bartelsu and Officer Tunnel. You got tunnel vision right now, that's all I'm going to say on that. And I was nothing but polite to you all, and I asked you, and I'm asking order for it not to be a no parking, right? There has to be a posted city ordinance that this area is a no parking zone, right? But you are using me for your training. You are using me for your training. Yeah, you are using me for your training. That's what it is. And we're going to make you guys famous, all right? We're going to use, we're going to make you guys famous. And I've been nothing but polite to you. Disrespected you in any way, shape, or form. All right, I'm gonna listen. Okay, so my partner showed up. It didn't appear. I don't want this to fall over on you. It didn't appear that there was parking never being here before. I assumed. Listen to me. Yes, I'm listening. I'm. I'm not even. I assumed this was no parking. It doesn't see a no parking sign. So, therefore, that makes me incorrect. You hear what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. Okay. So because of that. You were right. I was wrong. That's it. Sorry for bothering you. I'm not giving you my name, sir, because right now you're, you're breaching my Fourth Amendment. You're breaching my Fourth Amendment right now. I didn't demand your ID. I just asked your question. You're breaching by running my tags without me committing by running my tag without me committing a traffic infringement. Please. Down the street, if you're driving, if you're parked anywhere in a public place, we can run your tag. That's every American have a right. Have a right. We didn't see you drive it, so guess what? See, that's that's a breach of my, that's that's a Fourth Amendment violation right there on my part. All right, so because you running my tags without me committing a crime, that does not say no parking. So that then why was so I? The whole initial contact was because this to me uh, it didn't appear to be. All right, we investigated it and discovered 
but it looks like there's parking spots over there. What you guys did was a pretextual stop on me just now. A, a what? It was a pretextual stop on me. Yeah, we're allowed to run anybody's tag anytime. And go run this, go run theirs. Go run theirs too if we need to. And that's not a Fourth Amendment violation. And, I did uh, not demand your ID, so you're free to go. What no, I'm I'm chilling right uh, here. I ain't going nowhere. Well, here's the here's the deal. It looks like there's a suspension on that tag. No, I got an error come up on my screen too. That's why I had to use David. Uh, that's the only thing. Are I you guys know. familiar with the Fourth with the First Amendment, right? So that any, like I said, you are, are you fam familiar with? You have been okay. the whole time, but yeah. we're asking to try to identify you. To come and bother me right here when there's no where there's no city ordinance, so. No, sir, I was okay. not aware, but okay. I appreciate that Maybe information. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you guys be safe, and I sincerely mean that out there, okay? Yeah, All right. Me too. Thank you for watching our video. The situations in today's video highlight the importance of understanding and protecting your rights when dealing with the police. Don't let unreasonable demands make you lose your composure and feel powerless. Always be well informed about your rights to stand firm in difficult situations. We are committed to providing valuable and insightful content in our upcoming videos. Have a great day, and continue to stay tuned with us to not miss out on important information.